Today we head to Japan, where a man who spent more than four decades on death row was freed recently. The case of Iwa Hakamada shining a spotlight on the Japanese justice system. Now 78, the former boxing champion confessed to killing a family of four after 20 days of interrogation, during which he says he was beaten. Hakamada later retracted the confession in court. Now, why he adjusts to his newfound freedom, many people are asking, why is Japan's conviction rate so high? It currently stands at around 95%. Reporting from Tokyo, here's Justin McCurry. Hideko Hakamada's fight for justice has lasted almost half a century. The 81-year-old, here stepping into a boxing ring in celebration, has fought tirelessly on behalf of her brother, Iwao Hakamada. The former professional boxer spent 48 years in prison, awaiting execution for murdering a family of four. Released after new DNA evidence emerged that his lawyers say prove his innocence. After he was released, my brother sat on a chair and mumbled, I'm free. I was so happy for him, I almost couldn't believe it was true. I thought I might be dreaming. Hakamada fought in this ring in Tokyo. The boxing community never let him down during his time on death row, even keeping an empty ringside seat for him. Like me, Iwao trained hard and learned to tolerate pain. He's a fighter, so I've always felt close to him. I used to visit him in prison every month. Hakamada's life took a dramatic turn for the worse here in Shizuoka Prefecture in 1966. He was accused of the murder of his boss, his wife and their two children. He was sentenced to death two years later. Now aged 78, Hakamada is a free man, but the years in prison have taken their toll. After he was sentenced to death, he started saying strange things, that people could emit electricity, for example. Now I want him to undergo a thorough medical checkup, recover, and start living a happy, easygoing life. The judges in the original trial were swayed by blood-stained clothes that allegedly belonged to Hakamada. They included a pair of trousers that were clearly too small for him. Investigators bring in vulnerable people and use torture to get a confession out of them. This way of making false accusations is what happened not only to Hakamada, but also to other suspects. According to the head of Hakamada's legal team, his client is another victim of a patently unfair criminal justice system. Judges feel they have a duty to maintain public security, that unless they convict, a potentially guilty suspect will walk free. This is why Japan's conviction rate is over 95 percent. Campaigners believe Hakamada's case is yet another strong argument for the abolition of the death penalty in Japan, the only OECD country apart from the United States that still carries out executions. Once someone is executed, there is no going back. You can't bring someone back to life. About 130 inmates are on death row in Japan. Eight people were hanged here last year alone. But it's unclear whether this high-profile case will force the Justice Ministry into rethinking the country's enthusiastic use of the death penalty. Now, for more on Iwao Hakamada and the Japanese criminal justice system, I'm now joined on set by Gilles Campagnolo, an expert on Japan and coordinator for a European Commission program on Japan and China. Hello, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for inviting. I'd like to start off by asking you if you think that the case of this man, Iwao, Iwao Hakamada, believed to be the longest serving inmate on death row, is taking Japan perhaps uh, towards one step closer towards abolishing the death penalty? Oh, I would say simply no. No, in no way, in no case. This is a special case. And since the 50s, there have been only four, five, six people that have been innocented. That means enzai in Japanese, meaning that they are not guilty anymore, is guilty, is still guilty, is under parole, which means that he's freed and that there is a lot of evidence that he didn't commit it. That's why he's free. Now, the government says that there's still a lot of uh, popular support for the death penalty. Is that really the case in Japan? Yeah, sure. The government conducted a poll in 2009. Uh, more than 90 percent of Japanese people are in favor of death penalty. Why is that, do you think? Well, there is a cultural tray about it that's deep inside. First, there is care for the victim and for society. 
how would you feel if it were yourself? You don't take the point of view of the person who has committed the crime, you take the point of view of the society and of those who are victims. And the guy who did it himself, herself, tends to adopt that point of view, which means that he has to wipe away the guilt from himself. Yeah, to me or to know, to know. It means that he is kind of giving, he's, he's getting an opportunity from the society to wipe away the shame. But in Japan, uh inmates on death row don't know when they're going to die until just a few days before. Isn't that particularly cruel? It's particularly horrendous. The NGOs are particularly right, Amnesty International, in stressing that fact. Every morning they wake up listening to the sound on death row. If they hear some steps, they might think that it's their turn. Why is that? Isn't that cruel? Well, it's not cruel. It's another relationship to the self. And in that case, it is a very pragmatic reason. They don't want trouble. They don't want to have trouble within the, pr the prison, with people committing suicide, or with attacking the guards. And they don't want to have people outside the jails coming, like journalists and all that. So nobody knows. It's secret. It's secrecy. And it's only when the minister signs that, in a few days, they will be uh, executed by hanging. Speaking of secrecy, uh, lawyers aren't allowed in while suspects are being questioned. Isn't that also perhaps something that needs to change for people to get a fair trial? Well, you cannot say that there is no fair trial. It is fair. It's just that uh, they don't have the habeas corpus. But if they're interrogated corpus. for a very long time and we don't know in which circumstances exactly, then you might have people confessing to crimes they haven't committed, like we saw for this uh, case of Hakamada. There is a lot of pressure. Also, those guys are often coming from certain sorts, certain parts of the society. In the case of Hakamada, it was in the uh, report, it was said he was coming from the boxing kind of world, right? And uh, another case, Ishikawa Katsuo, it's uh, Burakumin, that is kind of outcasts people. So they are coming from outside society in some way, and society defends itself. And that's why the lawyer, the lawyer doesn't even know the day that the person will be hanged. So on all that, there is a very important book by Hotoiko Kaga, which has been translated now in Russian, which is the equivalent of, uh, in France, uh, the last day of the prisoner by Victor Hugo, which means that it is the one book about the condemnation. Uh, Senkoku, it means. Not yet a translation into English. If you want to learn something and to know something about Japan that was written in the 1970s, it's the same thing. It was the same thing at the end of the 19th century also. I'd like to talk a little bit about the system more generally, the justice system. In our report, uh, Hakamada's lawyer talks about judges feeling pressure to convict. Is that really the case, that they're under a lot of pressure and that's perhaps why there are so many convictions, about 95%? We may think of political pressure. That's what we would think of, right? Don't think in that terms. Think in terms of society as to defend itself. It's a shame upon all if you are committing something. If it, were, if it is somebody from your family who is doing something like that, you don't want to, uh, you feel bad, right? Family usually don't ask for the corpses or for the ashes of the dead uh, people. They don't want the ashes. So the government has to do something with them. One of them asked to be put into the sea in the Hokuriku region. Now, the system was changed in uh, 2009. There was the introduction of trial by jury. How much has that changed, do you think? Well, jury means public opinion, right? Public opinion is 90% in favor of a death penalty. In the 1970s, it was a high moment for a step towards abolishing. It was 20% against death penalty. Now it's 10% against death penalty. It doesn't, doesn't change. The reason is cultural, and it's not necessarily how to say it? We think of it in bad ways. We should think of it more sympathetically to the way that they consider the self and the individual. If you understand that, you understand what happens. And of course, it's a good thing when somebody is trialed and it's a mistake that they get freed in the end. OK, well, thank you very much for shedding some light on the Japanese legal system and society as a whole. You're very welcome.
Thank you. And that's it for Focus, and that's it also for our two-hour live show, live from Paris. I'll be back with the headlines in a few minutes, though, and we'll be crossing live to India as polls close on one of the busiest days of the election. Stay tuned for that and plenty more. <laughs>